What does the video title mean? Well, it's what Frida Kahlo did, and yes, this is about her. I bet you have heard her name before. Even if you haven't, where you know it, you've come to the right place. Now, let's take a look at her life summary before comprehending what I'm trying to convey here. Frida Kahlo, who was born on July 6, 1907, was a Mexican artist mostly known for her self-portraits. Though she was clearly a talented artist, art remained at the periphery of her life since she had always dreamed of being a doctor ever since she was a child. However, it all changed when she reached the age of 18. Frida was terribly injured in a bus and trolley car accident and it was during her recovery that she started painting, although this was not the first art form she practiced. It actually is so ironic to me because of how she painted her paintings. Her paintings blend her pain and struggles with the vibrant colors and motives of Mexican popular culture. Which when you take a look at it the first time, it does not look like a cliche, sad, nor emotional painting that you usually see with dull dark colors that you could tell by your first impression. Personally, I wouldn't have known it holds great meaning and strength in opposite pain by its choice of colors and elements. Therefore, yes, life was not kind to Frida, and this was her coping mechanism. At the age of 6, she contracted polio, a condition that made one of her legs shorter and thinner than the other. She was bullied by her peers, and the disease isolated her for long periods of time. After the bus accident, she suffered multiple fractures of her spine, foot, pelvis, collarbone, ribs, and her shoulder was dislocated. She nearly lost her life and needed over 30 surgeries. The atmosphere in her parents' house was also very tense, lacking love, and as she later described it, very, very sad. As if all of this was not enough, she had a turbulent marriage and also miscarried, causing her a serious hemorrhage that kept her in the hospital for weeks. In her early 20s, she married Diego Rivera in spite of her mother's disapproval. Diego was 20 years older than Frida, but her father thought the marriage would be a good deal. After all, Rivera was one of Mexico's most successful artists, a notable figure in the Mexican Communist Party, and he could easily financially support Frida as she didn't have the ability to work and was in constant need of expensive medical treatment. Diego's womanizer reputation preceded him, but Frida still loved him, even if he had cheated on her with several women. She eventually stopped being so fond of him after finding out that River had an affair with her younger sister. Soon after the couple divorced, Carlo contracted gangrene and had her right leg amputated at the knee. She struggled with severe depression that led to heavy drinking. Still, displaying raw emotion through art helped her cope with her condition more than anything else. About one week after her 47th birthday, Frida Kahlo passed away at her beloved Blue House on July 13, 1954, which is also the place where she was born at. Now that you've known some of Frida Kahlo's life story, you could have wondered how did she even manage to get through these phases of her life. The more I dig into her life story, the worse it gets. Not everyone would have been able to survive the kind of test she was given, but Frida Kahlo has made history, inspired many, an icon for those who are struggling up until now. It may seem like she had left, realistically, but she hasn't. Her works and influences have made it seem as though she is still alive more than ever. I find this incredibly similar to one of her quotes that she once said, I paint flowers so they will not die. And she has painted her life so beautifully like flowers in turning the excruciating pain into beauty and her passion stands out in every single one of her paintings that never dies, making her an appreciated and celebrated artist all over the world. Now, let's look at some of her astounding paintings. Her paintings are mostly self-portraits since she said it once, I paint myself because I am so often alone and because I am the subject I know the best. Each of her paintings presents symbolical meaning which gives hope that holds more like her own quote of At the end of the day, we can endure so much, which I could feel the same way as hers by how she made it possible and not let her struggles hold her back. And that's possible when we transform our pain into beauty and make most of our life.